Howdy folks, welcome back to another episode of Overlooked Modules and today we'll be taking a look at this right here. It is the ring module from EH or Eurorack Hardware. Now if that sounds familiar, they actually make rails and different various kits and stuff, but they make a handful of modules and this is one of them. This is a completely passive module. You see there's no power connector and you can get it completed. It's about $77 complete, good to go. Or you can get it as a DIY kit. It's about $45 as a DIY kit. Now, if you're familiar with this series and you've seen some of the previous episodes, you know I featured a couple different ring modulators before, so I guess I have a thing for ring modulators. Regardless, we're going to take a closer look at this one today. Now, if you look at the back here, it's very, very simple. You see eight diodes, four transformers, six jacks, and that's basically it. And it's two ring modulators in there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this into the rack. But uh, if you've ever seen a classic ring modulator circuit, here's one right here. Um, and this was used in telecom back in the day. And you can see there is two transformers and four diodes. That's as simple as it can get. And then an X, Y, and a Z input. So literally, you know, what EH has done is they've taken that circuit and squoze two of them, squoze, is that a word? But put two of them into 4HP. I love it. Okay, so we see there is a ring modulator circuit at the top and a ring modulator circuit at the bottom. Both are the same. We have a signal in, a carrier in, and an output on both. Now you can chain them together, but nothing is normal. So for starters here, I've got a couple oscillators here. I've got an analog oscillator. I'll take the sine wave from that and I'll plug it into the carrier input. Up here, I've got a digital oscillator. So I'll take the output from there, plug it into the signal input, and then I will take my output signal and I'll plug it over here into the output module. And we hear ring modulation going on. Now, of course, I can tweak, you know, and get effects. But let's go ahead and add some sequences. I think that might make things a lot more interesting. So I've got my sequencer over here, a couple sequences coming out. Let's plug one into the digital oscillator, one into the analog oscillator. And now we hear that classic ring modulator tone. All right, now we don't have to, of course, again, I can to get some weird effects and I can FM this or whatever, but we don't just have to use the traditional oscillator, right? I could just as easily come over here to my 2HP plug, use that as my signal input, and then I'll need to put a, um, need to put a trigger sequence into there and, Again, we hear some of that classic ring modulating tones. Really nice stuff. Now, of course, I could take this sequence out and just have a steady ring modulation. Just kind of a different thing. And I kind of like it when it's moving like that. And now, needless to say, I could take like the output from my digital oscillator and use it to FM this oscillator. Oops, this one here. Control the FM here and make it do all kinds of crazy things there, right? We get that, so ring modulator is capable of some craziness. But here's the thing, there's two. So we can chain ring modulator. If I take the carrier from this one and I make the carrier the input to the second ring modulator, and then I take the output from the first ring modulator and make that the carrier for the second ring modulator, now I've double ring modulated the signal and the pattern doesn't even sound the same. It sounds completely different. Now, of course, I don't have to just, that's not the only pattern here. I could do this and I could, I could take my input wave and I could double that. So now it's the same, this, this 2HP pluck is the input to both ring modulators, but we have Different. We have the, uh, the analog oscillator carrying the first ring modulator and then the output from the first ring modulator carrying the second ring modulator. And we start to get some craziness. Now, of course, we can switch that up too. What do we want here? We can do, you know, something like this. And that's the cool thing about having two analog ring modulators in your rack. You've got endless possibilities in 4HP. You can do all kinds of of craziness, whatever it is that you want to do. Oh, that's cool. So 
So just as we can use it as a series ring modulator, putting them together on a single signal, we can also use it as the parallel ring modulator. So what I've done here, I realize it's kind of messy here with all these wires, but what I've done here is I've taken the 2HP bell and the 2HP pluck, and I've used those for each of my signal ends, okay? And then I'm using the digital wavetable oscillator here as my carrier, the same one for both, okay? And then I've got my sequences going into the 2HP pluck and the 2HP bell, and then I've got a random voltage going in to the digital oscillator. So let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like. I've got them both going into a mixer so I can listen to them one at a time. Let's hear the other one. Bring them both up. Now we probably want to pick a pattern that goes a little better together. And of course I could easily grab another cable here and I could synchronize the clock out to my random clock in. There, now it's a little, little less dissonant. And then of course I can pick a different wave here on the wave table. Until I get something I really like. But the point is, it has a lot of uses. It's 4HP, it's dirt cheap, and it's passive.